At a 2018 talk, infamous faux feminist Alinda Bellos put out the call to violence against trans women for seeking equal rights through political means. And whilst this was the focus of much of the conversation surrounding said talk, Bellos also made the claim that gender as a principle had only arisen around the same time as the pseudoscientific principle of race, stating, quote, One of the categories, categories that human beings, and actually men, came up with the notion of races. They, the the, the categorisation of races seems to have been created around the time of gender being created. End quote. Linda Bellos, 2017. What was being implied here was clear. Since the principle of race is entirely founded on pseudoscientific notions and Bellos asserts gender shares that origin, she suggests gender shares the same pseudoscientific basis. Therefore, members of the transgender community are upholding a principle on par with racism in simply existing. You see, Linda Bellos is a TERF, that's a trans-exclusionary radical feminist, and I put the word feminist here in captions. TERFs, or more accurately pseudo or faux feminists, are a group of men and women who go around using the label of feminism as a justification for abusing trans people. Now, I don't know whether Linda Bellos is simply ignorant of history or whether she's knowingly and maliciously seeking to rewrite it, but this claim is in no way original. Indeed, TERFs have even coined the term transtrender as a means to delegitimize the experiences of trans people in general. So how does the claim that trans people are something new stand up to scrutiny? Well, before I begin, I need to note one important thing. Language and understanding changes. The word transgender is a relatively new term, even though the concept itself is not. To add to this, sadly, most of the historical documentation available exists under the cis gaze. That is, the perspective of people who identify as a gender they were assigned at birth. As a result, outdated or inappropriate terms, such as transvestite, unix and other similar labels, are commonly used for people whose lived experiences fall under what we now recognise as trans. This is important to note, as people like Linda Bellos like to play semantic games where they will use the facts that language and understanding evolves to claim that trans history doesn't exist. Instead, they assert that the writer is just describing a cis gay crossdresser, even if the details offered show us that no, that is not the case at all. It's the same sort of reasoning that would argue that same gender love between women couldn't have existed prior to the Greeks and the Isle of Lobo, since the word lesbian certainly wasn't around before then. The fact is, we can read the descriptions of an act or a person and refer to it in the context of contemporary language, something that seems to mystify the faux feminist community. So to get to the start of our journey, we're going to need to travel back more than 10,000 years, to the end of the Paleolithic. You see, when comparing distinct populations scattered across the globe, we find a peculiar trend. The existence of transvestite shaman. This figure was not simply acknowledged as transgressing both sexuality and gender identity, but revered for doing so. So frequent is this cultural phenomenon, in fact, that it led Dr. David Greenberg, a queer historian at New York University, to state that this cultural practice likely arose in the quote, late Paleolithic, if not earlier, end quote. Note that he is not on about the existence of trans or gay people, but their early cultural impact. As long as there have been people on this earth, some of those people have been trans, some of those people have been gay, some of those people have been bisexual, and so on and so forth. This was merely the start of recorded trans history in the cultural impact they had. Now yes, both sexuality and gender were melded together, but this is the result of a more primitive understanding of the topic. Just as one cannot remove the variety in sexuality from these figures, nor can you remove the variety in their gender identity. But trans people would make their own distinct mark throughout our species relatively short time on this planet. In the ninth chapter of the Kama Sutra, which is thought to have originally been compiled somewhere around the 3rd to 4th century before Common Era, we find descriptions of sexual acts carried out by members of both male and female trans individuals. And this cultural mark still exists and is alive in India today with the contemporary Hijra community who, like the before-mentioned shaman, are looked up to with a religious and spiritual awe. The Hijra used to travel from place to place, offering services, as well as offering to take any child who was intersex or trans. These children and infants would then be adopted into the Hijra community, 
Whether they be spared a childhood of neglect by parents who would instead choose to focus on their cis and non-intersex children as a means of carrying on the family name. In the pre-colonial Americas, we see trans communities forming numerous civilizations. In South America, the deity of Tazototl, who was the protector of the Husatec people, taking pain and suffering and turning it into gold, was not only worshipped by lesbian priests, but also women who'd been assigned male at birth, so as we know them today, trans women. Up north, when we find various tribes such as the Cree, the Lakota and the Zuni people, who acknowledge and revere people that, more recently, have come to be known by the title of Two-Spirit. In general, this refers to a person who is both male and female, so akin to being non-binary. Yet this term has very broad and distinct applications, dependent on the specific tribe being discussed. Yet in many instances, much like the Hijra of India, these two spirits fulfill a spiritual role among the native people. Now I'd like to pause our history lesson here to note the fact that if you are a member of the trans community and you do not belong to either one of the First Nations of the Americas or have not been accepted into the Hijra community in India, do not utilise either of these terms or related terms to describe yourself. Within some of the Native American tribes, people of that tribe require a formal initiation to be recognised as Two-Spirit. So for you to come along and start using said term to describe yourself without said initiation is problematic. Simply put, respect their culture. Now these are just some of the best documented and still surviving examples of living culture surrounding trans people that has existed for thousands of years. There are many more cases one could go over scattered here and there, but for the sake of time, we've had to narrow things down. Thankfully, there are some great resources out there available if you want to know more on the topic of trans history. So what happened to all of this? Why, why don't we learn about it? Well, like homosexuality, there have been short-lasting periods of hostility towards trans people that have come and gone. Yet all of that changed during the 4th century Common Era, the century during which the Christianization of Rome was in full swing. Part of this process was the rapid passing of laws intended to bring the Roman Empire under the Christian vision, one which is inherently hostile towards the LGBT plus community. In 342 Common Era, under the rule of Constantinus II and Constans, the law was changed to declare that men who took upon themselves the role of a woman with a specific focus on marriage, once again blurring together both male homosexuality and trans women in heterosexual relationships, would be sentenced to death. Then, 18 years later, under the rule of Valentine II, Theodosius I, and Arcadius, they would once again reiterate that any man caught taking on the role of a woman in appearance or for sex would not only be executed, but would be burnt to death publicly. This was the standard set within the early Christian Empire, and would be one it carried with it not just through the fall of Rome, but the colonial era. As Christianity spread with the dawning of Western colonialism, it took with it these ideas. When the Spanish arrived in the New World and found trans priestesses, they began to publicly execute them either via the sword, public burning, or even having them torn apart by their dogs. It was part of their attempts to eradicate local culture by means of violence. This was something that was also carried out by settlers in North America, surrounding then separate two-spirit identities that existed in a number of tribes. As many native children were taken and indoctrinated in Christian schools, they were taught to despise not just LGBT plus people in general, but those who took on the roles specific to Two Spirit, creating an internal rift of distrust that still exists to this day and hurts all LGBT plus Native Americans. Likewise, during the colonial period of India, the British invaders first gathered data on the various tribes and castes found throughout India, including the Hijra community. The British then used this to class the Hijra community as a, quote, criminal caste, end quote, first implementing said policies in the northwest of the country before applying these laws elsewhere with the 27th Criminal Tribes Act which legally required every member of the Hijra community to register their existence for surveillance. The act also gave the legal right to police to arrest people who, quote, appear dressed or ornamented like a woman in public street or place, or in any other place with the intention of being seen from public street or place, end quote. At the time, there were three colonial perspectives of what consisted a member of the Hijra community. There was the infertile man, the intersex individual, and the self-made trans woman, often referred to as an artificial eunuch. 
Now these are not the only groups that exist within the Hijra community, and though each one was present to some degree, it seems that the British invaders could not comprehend such variety in person, so took to reducing the Hijra as a whole, down to one of three types. Today the Hijra mostly perform blessings whilst carrying out the same service of adopting unwanted intersex and trans children. And even though both me and my partner Udita are atheists, we still often pay for the blessing because we know that that money will be pooled with the local Hijra community and redistributed to those trans and intersex individuals in need the most. So in returning to the assertion made by Linda Bellos as well as others as an attempt to delegitimize trans voices, I hope this very brief look at trans history has shown you the fact that no, transgender identities are not some new invention spawned and they did not suddenly appear because of some colonial narrative of gender. In fact, if anyone is forwarding a colonial narrative, it is Linda Bellos and those cheering her on. After all, for their attempts at poisoning the well to work, they have to erase millennia of cultural practice with many of the clearest examples coming from nations invaded by Western colonialism. The very same cultural aspects said colonialism itself set about so hard to erase. These pseudo-feminists seek to maintain violence against the victims of colonialism, declaring it perfectly acceptable to continue to harm these communities so long as said harm also hurts the transgender community. Upholding centuries of colonial violence as a means to achieve anything is just a terrible thing to do. But for the faux feminist, it's just a means to an end. But none of that changes the facts that trans erasure goes hand in hand with colonial violence. And that's something we need to start calling out. Hi there. I'd just like to say a few things here at the end of the video before you go. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone who's ever donated to the channel via Patreon, giving a special thanks to the following people. Hannah Banghart, Matthew Kovac, John Schoenrock, Daniel Martinez, and Alexander Williams. Your support has ensured this channel's ability to grow over the years. I'd also like to ask that you comment down below and like this video, as well as subscribe, hit the bell icon, and follow Essence of Thought on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Please also consider following Atheist Alliance International on Facebook, a humanist organization dedicated to helping atheists around the globe. Any comments utilizing language which insults others on the basis of perceived gender, sexuality, ethnicity or ability both mental and physical will be removed immediately and the commenter may be blocked on the moderator's discretion. Let's work to keep this space one which upholds the values of humanism. Thank you.